the other part that really struck me, and again, it's sort of, you didn't elaborate a little bit, a lot on it, but it's some things that I kind of want to flush out a little bit maybe more here is you, you make the case that the, the Mountain Meadow Massacre in Southern Utah, where it's this immigrant train of um, settlers that's on its way west is ambushed by Mormons. Let's just keep it that basic. Mm -hmm. That creates kind of the same casualty figures that you have in, 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 in bleeding Kansas. And I don't think anyone has ever juxtaposed these two in that kind of dramatic fashion to say, if we're paying so much attention to Kansas, why aren't we paying the same attention to the Mormon war? Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and there has been some great stuff on it. I, I'd have to check my footnotes on that particular point. I, it may be the case that Will Bagley made that argument about the, the comparative casualty rates. Um, yeah, I, I, I can't off the top of my head remember where I got that comparison from, but, but it, I think it's, a, it's an interesting and it's a useful comparison. Mm -hmm. um, Bleeding Kansas was, uh, of course, sort of a tipping point in the spiral towards civil war, but it wasn't, it wasn't quite as bloody as we may think. Right. Um, and, and the Mormon war, the Mormon war was actually the, the only other time um, in, in the antebellum era that an, an independent militia took up arms against the United States. Yeah. Um, and it, you know, it, it's hard to compare the Mormon war to the Confederate rebellion, but there, there are certain elements mm -hmm. that at least bear a resemblance. Well, and in the end, the Mormons did want to create a state within the United States. So it, there is a certain comparison that probably can be made that um, maybe somebody can write about it. Yeah, so. yeah. And, and I, I hesitate to make that comparison myself because it's, it's not charitable to um, uh, LDS settlers. Um, mm -hmm. And, and I, I don't think it's necessarily fair to say that they're in any way on par with Confederate rebels, but um, but thinking about the ways that and Tommy Richards does this really brilliantly in his new book, thinking about the ways that antebellum Americans or mid nineteenth century Americans were thinking about um, all sorts of different political mm -hmm. configurations for the North North American continent, and thinking about all sorts of different independent republics mm -hmm. um, is helpful, and that's that's sort of one of the uh, it's one of the arguments that runs through this book. Right. And I mean, just like slavery, I mean, polygamy is a very significant kind of um, issue that the Republican Party does take an interest in too. So um, they're the not to say like the barbarism. Yeah, it's yeah, it's the barbaric others that we need to civilize, right? 